This is Twit. Uh, briefly, I don't know what the long term impact of this is going to be, but I think I should mention it. I'm sure Steve Gibson will cover it. Um, speculative execution has been a problem in. <coughs> pro yeah, you know what I'm talking about here. <coughs> Processors from Intel and ARM, uh, you know, about Spectre and Meltdown. Oh, I thought you were meaning due process and the death penalty. Yeah, you would okay, think that, yeah. but no, no, no. We're talking chips here, baby. Okay, all right, good. This is chips. <laughs> And uh, and it w and it's been a problem uh, on the Intel and the uh, and ARM side for some time. Apparently, I'm sorry, AMD, not ARM, on the x86 side. Apparently, the same problem may be plaguing ARM devices. In fact, there is a new side channel attack on Apple's M series chips, the one, two, and three, that leaks encryption keys again with speculative execution. Oh. Uh, and this problem apparently cannot be fixed. The flaw, so this is, I'm reading now from uh, Dan Gooden's article uh, at Ars Technica, a side channel allowing end-to-end -end key extractions when Apple chips run implementations of widely used cryptographic protocols cannot be patched directly because it stems from the microarchitecture of the silicon itself. It can only be mitigated by building defenses into the third-party cryptographic software, but that just as with Spectre and Meltdown, severely degrades the performance, basically turns off, I'm guessing, speculative execution. Um, now, it's not something you as an M1, 2, or 3 user probably has to worry about. It's much more an issue in the, in the server room because uh, the targeted cryptographic operation and the malicious application have to run on the same CPU cluster. So either somebody have to have access to your computer, but mostly, just as with Spectre and Meltdown, this issue uh, affects shared CPUs in servers and, and places like that. Well, that that is a big deal. Oh, it I sure mean, is. The, the, it's not, the way that yeah. I mean, I remember when uh, mm. Russia targeted me. Uh, you know, when I was running for office, like you know, the the truth is, hostile foreign powers like dedicate like really strong resources to running these kinds of attacks. I mean, imagine. Imagine a senior person at DOD, right? Like having their <clears throat> MacBook, all their emails read, all their security clearance. Like this is <clears throat> this is a non-trivial problem. You know, people can't go to the the skiff every single time they need to like right. look at top secret stuff. So there there's so many parts of this that are are concerning. There's the fact that this issue of speculative execution is baked into like the M M1, 2, and 3 chips already. That's problematic because we did have the preface of Spectre and Meltdown. The thing I couldn't believe about this story was, Leah, do you have the exact number? It was like 123 days since they reported this to Apple and Apple did not respond to it. And eventually they go... Okay, well, we've done what we can. And then they went out and, and talked to the public about this. It's really concerning to me to see Apple not address this forthrightly. So every part of this is really concerning. Yeah, this is from a team of researchers from the University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign, UT Austin, Georgia Institute of Technology, UC Berkeley, University of Washington, Carnegie Mellon. This is a very credible uh, report it may be that Apple has nothing that they can do about it. They call it GoFetch, breaking constant time cryptography implementations using data memory dependent prefetchers. That's where the name GoFetch comes from. And yeah, as you point out, they've published now a proof of concept uh, and more information about it. As usual, uh, the com companies that discover this stuff will wait, <clears throat> giving the company a chance to patch it. Uh, but after a certain amount of time, they go public with it. And we're at that point at that point so i realize this is missing the point but i keep wanting to make pentium 5 jokes <laughs> <laughs> why is that remember the pentium oh the 5 uh, the uh, of, like, flo floating point what is implementation two plus three well yeah like, yeah <laughs> we'll get back to you <laughs> on that like it was such an innocent time <laughs> <laughs> so, easy days those were the good old days uh, yeah, I don't know what Apple's going to do about this. There really isn't much to do about it. Uh, but again, a reminder, if you're a, a single user working at home, this isn't going to be a problem for you. Threat model is an important thing to keep in mind when <laughs> yeah. reading about things like this. Realistically, uh, for the vast majority of people who are listening, who read the story, they they will see their data compromised because they clicked on a link to enter their password yeah. at a phishing site. That's much more dangerous. Or they exactly. reused a password. Yeah. They did all the other things you're not supposed to do. 
Um, this is a real problem, same, same way it was for Intel mm-hmm. with Spectre and Meltdown. And I do not envy the job of the people who have to figure out how do you mitigate this in software given the hardware. It's in the laptop, it's, it's in the desktop, it's in my Mac Mini at home, and it's not Actually, much you can do about that. somewhat more relevantly, I'm looking at this and wanting to think about does it change the right to repair ecosystem or a policy ecosystem because how do you fix it? If the chips are not fixable, <laughs> wouldn't it be nice if you could pop it out and replace it with a new one? Um, yeah, but and, that's a long way yeah, to you, go for it. You need a framework laptop to do that. Be, <laughs> no, no, but, but, um, be but Apple home brewing their own. <laughs> yeah, but Apple. Chip and by the way, there's but, no chip yeah. you can go to that uh, is not vulnerable right. to something like this. No, but the point right. being that Apple has been, in particular, so although they may have moved around, so I don't know their latest positions, but they've been very resistant <laughs> to again that walled garden, how oh, yeah. tightly they they engineer everything. And here's a bit where your product has a defect, and now you even can't. It's pretty uh, cost effectively uh, fix yeah. it because your product was unfixable. And maybe if there's any going to be any liability attached to it for how unfixable it is. Maybe it causes the company to be a little more friendly towards not hot gluing everything and to make right. sh- and to make parts a little bit more poppable. I know Steve will be covering this on Tuesday on security. Well, I don't know for sure, but I would expect Steve will be covering this on security now. He'll give us a more technical explanation of what's going on. He will also, I'm sure, as he does every year, cover Pwn to Own, the wonderful, <laughs> fun party they have in Vancouver every year where uh, contestants can earn big prizes by hacking into systems. Hey, thank you for watching this little snippet from our big show, the News Roundtable, This Week in Tech. I'm Leo Laporte. Each week we cover the week's tech news, in-depth analysis, but it's also fun and engaging. You'll find it at twit.tv along with all of our shows. And if you want more, just hit the subscribe button and uh, we'll be sure to bring you a lot more great content. Thanks for listening.